Welcome to Wealth Made Simple with Shaz, where you'll learn how to master your money through business, property, and tax saving strategies. Your host has collectively helped his clients make tens of millions of pounds in additional profits through these strategic approaches to business. Introducing Shaz Nawaz, an award-winning chartered accountant, property tax expert, entrepreneur, and property investor. So this week, what do we what what do we think? Think about changing your mind. So sounds like hard work that does changing my mind. Well, I mean, it's just another fancy way of saying I had an idea. Mm. Um, yeah, but I mean. To your mind, what are the what are the key components as to why people should be more open to changing their minds in terms of their mindset, in terms of how it helps them, how it benefits them? I think very simply speaking, there are usually, and I'd probably be a bit more bold and say, always better ways of doing things. Uh, and if you have a closed mindset, or you're from the world where I've seen it all, I've done it all, I know how the world works, blah, 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 uh, then you're less likely to adopt new ideas, new technology, new ways of doing things, uh, so you're going to lose out. Uh, and if you have an open mindset to learning, improving, seeing things differently, understanding you don't know everything, understanding you don't know what you don't know, so on and so forth, uh, then it's going to help you to broaden your horizons. So, I mean, is that a bit like you know the the old soldier soldier on the bench yes it is that's the one yep yeah so for, for those of you who don't know the soldier on the bench um new captain starts at his new post at, um at a barracks and as he's wandering through the barracks he wanders past two soldiers standing guard at a bench and he asks them what they're doing there they said standing guard so nobody sits on the bench okay why, why are you doing that order sir okay and he thinks about this for a while and you know, goes away. He goes and finds his commanding officer. He's like, the uh, soldier's standing guard making sure no one sits on the bench. Why? Oh, well, um, it's what we've always done. There's always been soldiers there standing guard making sure no one sits on the bench. So, you know, I don't know what to tell you. It's It just is. All right. So he does a bit more research and he finds the old commander, the old captain. And Fight, tracks him down again. So, uh, do you remember the bench with the soldiers standing guard, making sure no one sits on the bench? Yep. Why? No idea. It was like that before my time. There's always been soldiers there standing guard, stopping people from sitting on that bench. Oh. Well, who was in charge before you? He finds out and he goes and tracks them down. Gets the chief of staff, does he, after yeah. a while? Get, gets, gets to the person that is now an old man. He says, the uh, bench. Two soldiers standing up, making sure nobody sits on it. Why? Why? Yeah. We did that 60 years ago because we just freshly painted the bench. <laughs> Why are they still there? Because <laughs> yeah. that's how we've always done it. And that is the danger of a closed mind. You don't. You do things, you don't always know why you're doing them. Two really good ones uh, I used to get a lot when I used to do a lot of business growth consultations. Number one, every time you share an idea, my business is different. Uh, that was the number one excuse reason, but my business is different. Right? The second one was, but we've always done it this way. When you ask why, most people couldn't explain, but we've always done it this way and it works. But it doesn't work because you've called me in because you've got a problem and you want it to be fixed. If it was working for you, you wouldn't have me in here, would you? No, no, exa exactly that, yeah. And you know, I, do, I do like the, that's the, the, oh, but my business is different. Really? Yeah. For, for, from the... 10 million other businesses that and I, then I used to say uh, so you don't have a marketing function don't have a sales function don't have an operations function don't have a finance function don't have a some form of a HR function some kind of a customer service function whether you seem like that or not but you don't have those functions I do and well, guess what so does everybody else. So your business does like everybody else's. You might be selling something differently you might be packaging it differently but okay we can debate about that. Your business doesn't have everybody else because you put those functions. Yeah, and after you know three thousand plus growth consultations, you you kind of sat there going, uh, "I've seen I've seen this once or twice before." Yeah, and chances yeah. are I know what I'm talking about. 
but that was the best one. But my business is different. And but's such a closed word. It's a beautiful word, word isn't it? Beautiful word. I love it. It it is a beautiful word, but it's also a very closed word, a very very dismissive word, you know. Shaz, what about this? Yes. But what about we do it this way because I don't really care about what you thought. Oh, uh, okay. And it 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 very much shuts shuts well, people Well, nothing down. before the word but really matters, matters does it? You're a really nice guy. I really yeah. appreciate everything you've done. You're really hardworking, but... It's one of the few words in the English language, which is vast, as you know, which changes the meaning of the whole thing that you're saying with the words you used after but. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what you say before. Everything that matters comes after You change the, the whole meaning, yeah? You're fantastic, blah, blah. You turn up on time. You do good work. We appreciate you. You've been with us for so long. But... We're gonna have to let Dude. you go. <laughs> oh, oh well, so, that, that's so, not funny, but yeah, but so, yeah. Uh, so, so, so you don't appreciate me, and you don't. Suddenly, it makes everything that you said before, un, either feel like a lie, even if it wasn't. It makes it feel. They're that just making way. It easy for themselves. Yeah. To make you feel a bit better, until the butt comes in. Yeah. But there, yeah. there you go. But yeah, so so there's that, and yeah, and though. The polar opposite of but. Well, it connects the word, the, the sentence, the meaning, or the yeah. phrases, or what you're using. You're yeah. fantastic, and you could be even to... better. Yeah, it's 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 a more open, yeah. o- o- open word. And though ch- changing that one word from but to and changes your entire vocabulary, changes the entire way you speak to people, the entire way you think about people, and that one small change. Changes so many, so many other things. So imagine how changing an entire mindset can change your entire life. Absolutely. You know, you, ra- rather than you know, yes, yeah, Shaz, but I can't really do that. To it's uh, uh, down, 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 down. Yes, yeah, Shaz. And when we accomplish that, and when we've achieved that, and and success principle, yeah, positivity, growth. Going forward, all the nice fun words. What's more to ask for? I know. Well, I mean, I could also ask for a winning lottery ticket. No. Um. <laughs> next week. Next week. Ask me next week. Ask I'm, t- next I'm too busy this week. Okay. I would, but <laughs> I would, but I'm busy this week. I'm washing. I, I'd, I'd love to go out, but I'm washing my hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to have you back in the studio. Good to be back, mate. Um, so another thing that will help you change your mindset and you know from a fixed fixed mindset where you are where you are and that's that that's it to a more open mindset is you know listening to podcasts like this will help help your mindset um because there are many minds many mindset based podcasts out there that are really really good really really influential people doing them and they will help guide you on your journey. Um, but developing a routine. Now, I know that sounds odd because developing a physical routine throughout your day, what's that got to do with mindset, Shaz? Everything, because how we do one thing is how we do everything. Oh, yeah, but if I make sure I get up at seven and go to the gym every day and... You know, get up at seven, go to the gym, finish the gym, go to work, go to work, come home, come home, have a healthy meal, finish my healthy meal, read a book, go to bed, work 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 on you know my own personal development or you know or or um, a side job, a new business, adventure ideas, something like that, or I drag my ass out of bed and and crawl into the shower. Make sure I'm clean for the day. Half asleep, get into the car, skip the gym because you know that's too much like hard work. Uh, I can't be bothered this morning. Then uh, all right, I'll get to work. I'll do my job, but but I haven't had my I haven't had, I haven't had my second coffee yet. And oh, um, you eat Bix? B five five fix. I've had my <laughs> Weetabix. And then yeah, you, your work day takes another hour to get started properly because. You've, you're still half asleep fundamentally. Yeah. 
Well, then, the, you're right. Then, and then you're watching the clock until until the day's end, and as soon as the day's end... Uh, what well, a wonderful five, life that is, eh? It's, it's, it's five o'clock, time to go home. All right, I'm going to... What are you going to do? I'm going to order some takeaway because I can't be bothered to eat. I can't be bothered to cook. Okay, so I'm having a bit of unhealthy. Yeah, I know it's unhealthy, but it's quick. It's easy. Which life would you prefer? Well, the first thing I'd say to you, Kieran, is how's that plan working out for you? Which one? That one. <laughs> if that were you, which it obviously isn't. Do you know what I mean? That's the first place to start. And the second place to start when you talk to people about routine, and I link this with my... Uh, part of my previous life and experience in terms of uh, business consulting uh, was when you talk to people about do you, what's your sales process? Oh, I don't have a sales process. Okay. Uh, you sure? Yes, I am. So what do you do when you're going through sales? And they'll talk to you about, I see a prospect and we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this. So you do have a process. People don't understand whatever they're doing is their process. It might not be the process that they want, but it's their process. Same with routine. Whatever you do, however you do it, whether it's the example that you've shared, or people doing different things, whether they go for a walk, jog, meditation, whatever else, okay, the star jumps in the morning, whatever, okay, where rocks their boat, which is fine. Uh, but that's their routine. If that routine isn't working out for them for some reason, or it's not giving them the results that they ought to get, then what they're going to appreciate is they do have a routine. It's not the right routine for them, for what they're looking to achieve. So let's change the routine. People, people, people say, I don't have a routine. You have a routine because there's something you do regularly every single day, pretty much every single week. Yeah. From when you wake up to whether you brush your teeth first or you have a coffee first or you go for a jog first or you have a cigarette first, whatever people do, different people do different things, okay? But that's your routine. Yeah, right right the way down to when your alarm goes off, if your alarm goes off, do you hit the snooze or do you stop and get up? Which do you do? That's that, a routine. That, that's a routine. Yeah. You know, if you, if you routinely... And, and the clue is in the name. Do you routinely press the snooze button for the next half an hour before you know, all right, if I don't get up now, I'm going to be late? Yep. And you, I've yet to meet someone that enjoys being late, but I've met plenty of people that accept that they're always late. Yeah, I'm just late. Yeah, I know. But what can we do? Because if you start talking about late, you know, I'll be here for a long <laughs> time. We won't get up our soapboxes, you know, because we're sticklers for being on time uh, more often than not. Uh, and we use, we'll seldom are we late, by the way, if, as you if, know. If it, if it starts at nine, by yeah. the time nine o'clock hits, you're already You better late. be there. You better be good, good to go. But what are the, some of the things you think people can do to change, let's say, their morning routine? I think... And some people might be doing this as they're listening to this right now or at some point in the, in the near future. But what, for those who are thinking, well, what else can I do apart from waking up and having a coffee or a tea or my cereal or whatever? I, I think people get this idea stuck in their head that they need to make radical changes to make any change at all. And in, in my world, in my opinion, that's, that's the wrong way to look at things. Asking for too much, isn't it? It's, it's too, too much in too short a space of time. It's got to be gradual. You can't go from, you know, hitting the snooze button five times from a 7 a.m. alarm and getting out of bed at 8 o'clock to get in the shower, have a coffee, get in the car, go to work. You can't suddenly go, okay, I'm going to set my alarm for 6 I'm going to get up, I'm going to have an hour and a half in the gym, so I finish the gym at half seven, which still means that I'm still done before I would normally get out of bed, so I've still got half an hour to play with, I'm then going to go and get my coffee, and then I'm going to you know, have my shower, have my coffee, get to work on, and then, then I'm going to be at work 10 minutes earlier than I would have been before, which is fantastic, and suddenly I'm going to have so much more energy, and that's going to be great, and it's too much, it's too much. Step. If, if, you, if you are in the snooze club, set your alarm 15 minutes later than you normally would, but don't allow yourself to snooze. I do what I do. I don't think that's right. My uh, watch is always fifteen minutes ahead. That too. Yeah. So that and I just stick. To, and I know it's fifteen minutes ahead, but I just stick to that being the time. Mm-hmm. So I try my best to arrive fifteen minutes early. early. Yeah. But if you if you if you're not used to having changed anything, and you want to change one thing, learn to get up when the alarm goes off. It may seem like a really really small thing and inconsequential, but I promise you it will change your entire day because. If you're used to snoozing, it takes a lot of discipline, self-discipline, to hit that stop button, not roll over and go back to sleep, 
and get up. So we're up now. What are some of the things we can do? Personally, for me, you know, a bit of exercise. You know, per, you know, 10 push-ups, if you can manage 10 push-ups, 5 push-ups, whatever. Quick run around the block. Or, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a garden, a couple of laps of the garden, run up and down, run up and down. If you don't have that, stairs, you know, or just go out for a five minute walk, come back, then shower, you know, obviously put some, put appropriate clothing on, but, you know, don't just get out. Well, all I does. <laughs> Actually, what's popular, but a lot of people that I talk to uh, tell me to do, which works well for them, cold showers. Cold showers are fantastic. I love a cold shower. Energy wakes them up, yep. good for their body, recovery, all the other yep. benefits, okay. Uh, and, and and go online and look at the benefits of cold shower. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, meditation. Meditation. A lot of people do meditation in the morning. And, calms them down. And what I find interesting about meditation, because I, 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 medit- I meditate in the shower. I, I like to use um, waterfall meditation. Um, but that's just something that I found that works. I can meditate in a shower. Great, fine. It works for me. It wakes me up. It clears my head. It gets me ready for the day. But... People, I think in general, and I am generalizing here, I admit that, have a misunderstanding of what meditation is. It's not, you know, sat sat in the middle of nowhere with your legs crossed. With your legs crossed, yeah, yeah. yeah. And your hands together and... And your hands going, oh... Sing, oh, or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. You know, close your eyes and... And this is, you know, people say, clear your mind, clear your mind. Really? No. No, don't clear your mind. Close your eyes. Think of, think of a field, a beach, somewhere that brings you calm. Just imagine that place. Now focus on your breathing. Just focus on breath in, breath out. Count to 15. Yep. Calms you down. Count to 15. Congratulations, you've just meditated. Yeah. Um, it I'm works. Se- no, you're and right. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm serious. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. You're right. Take, take yourself mentally to a place that's calming. Count to 15. Focusing and thinking only about how you are breathing. And there's loads of, as you know, different techniques yeah, yeah. to meditate. So that, that works well. Some people I speak to like to read, whether it's a holy book, uh, whether it's a book that inspires them, uh, a new book, uh, a magazine, a journal, newspaper, whatever people like. But a lot of people, not a lot, quite a few people I know, uh, most cold showers, meditation by the way, but there are some who read in the morning. And what what's interesting is that then whatever they've read, they take at least something from that and adopt that the day. for the day. And they find that's very helpful to them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can completely see that. I'm I'm not an early morning reader. I'm a late night reader. I'd rather read mm-hmm. into the evening. Um, I thought you liked watching stuff. Or... YouTube or whatever. I, I, I love YouTube. I'm a big, big fan of YouTube. Um, or audiobooks. If I don't, if, because, you know, invariably, yeah, but Shaz, I, I don't have time to read a book. Or don't like reading or can't read or whatever, because they would, yeah, you know, dyslexic or whatever the reason might be. Yeah. So there's other yeah. options, you're audio, right. Audio book. So we've got three there, plus the exercise, four. Yeah. We've got a fifth one for people, Kieran. Uh, if not, I'll give you one now, which works incredibly well, is two linked together, in, involve writing. One is a thank you note to somebody in your life, wherever they are. And a journal. Okay. And the second one is a journal. Write down the things you are grateful, grateful for. And the people who do this consistently, thank you note and or journal for the things that they're grateful for. Do it consistently for a number of weeks and months. It just lifts them and just transforms them as a person. Because yeah. being grateful by thanking people for in their lives. Because there's people we don't talk to for days, weeks, months, years. Okay? And just... Sending them a note to say thank you because you did X for me. That's helped me. Or just to thank them for being in your life. So therapeutic. It is therapeutic. But I would also go for, go one stage further and say that it's happy catharsism. It's, I defy you to write a thank you note and be angry about it. Mm. I, I defy anyone Thank you for you, nothing. Yeah, it, 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 you, you just don't. Yeah. You know, hey, 
you know, Shaz, just wanted to thank you for meeting up for that coffee yesterday. I really needed a chat. It was really good. Thank you. Go on. Feel, feel, go on. feel angry about that. I know. You, you can't. So it puts you in a better place for the rest of the day. So that's five good things people have got. Mm. And there are many of these, by the way, we're not going to run through everything one because we want to cover and, at the bit. Because I know you prepared thoroughly for this, as, as, as like always. a good guy. And, and just remember, happiness is infectious. Absolutely. Which I think is just such a fabulous thing. Um, and on, on the back of, um, you know. And at the same time, with, with writing up, I think it's also important, Kieran, but when people write down their goals or their priorities in life, revisit them in the morning. Yeah. Just to focus you, remind you what's very really important in your life, whether it's your uh, spouse, your children, your family, your business, whatever it is, your your pet, your car, whatever. Different people have to have different, uh, your hobby, your ambition. People and it's, like. it's not for anyone else to yeah, judge yeah, what, yeah, what exactly. is important to you. Yeah, so revisit those priorities so you make sure you're on track. Because we all go off track often enough. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, we sidetrack a lot. Um, and we both know we That's that. your fault, isn't it? Well... You always... I, I will take accountability for it. Yeah, yeah. You open that corridor on the left, don't you? And say, he do. goes, Look what's in here. And then, oh, <laughs> before you do you know, I'm, I'm a We're going down kid in a sweet hole. shop. Like, oh, let's go down, <laughs> down that <laughs> rabbit hole or down in that corridor. Yeah. You trip me up, don't you, you naughty boy? I know. Mm. Um, but sp- speak, speaking of, of naughty boys, um, monologuing. Mm. Everyone's got an internal monologue that tells them who they are, tells them what they're good at, what they're bad at. But for a lot of people, this internal monologue can be very negative and very self-destructive. Yeah. Oh, that didn't work because I'm rubbish. Because I can do it. What made you think you could do that? Well, focus a little bit on, you know, on average, I think uh, there are between five and ten loops that you have that go on inside your internal monologue. And this is something that meditation does really, really help with. If you can alter just one of them um, to improve the way you think about yourself um, and the way that you talk about what what yep. you do for yourself, then you're, you're a whole stage closer to, some th- to yeah, other things than everyone else. Yep, and then oh, there's other things less raise people's awareness so they can obviously go and research. Yeah, 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 100%. Uh, is keep a folder or a box or a book uh, of words that encourage you, so things you've done for people that gives you happiness and joy, whether it's your family, your, your colleagues, your clients, your patients, your customers. And just yeah. to remind you that life's not all that bad and you're doing some really good stuff because we all have our ups and downs when you've got downs. Yeah. That's going to lift you up. And, I mean, something that I do with that... Um, is where when some when someone tells me that you know I've been a terrible human being or I've done something bad or something like this or they don't like me for whatever reason, I remind myself that I have been best man best man for friends and family eleven times now in my life. Eleven times someone has thought that they had nobody else that chose you. They had nobody else, so they chose me. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, I know. But you know what I mean? That, That's right. And that makes me go, actually, I'm not a worthless individual. Absolutely not. Yeah. No, I, do, right. yeah. I do have something to give. Alongside that, which is obviously a, a really good example, food evaluation, your food intake, what you're taking in, okay, how, how that's impacting you. Uh, you've also got spending time with nature, going for a walk. People go for a walk, absolutely love it, you know, with different people. Uh, if you have a pet or a dog, you can obviously take, them, take them for a walk. And then there's different types of mindset. And a growth mindset really is when things go wrong, they look for an opportunity to grow. They believe they have the potential to see every problem as a challenge as opposed to a problem. Uh, so having an open growth mindset, feedback, okay, is the breakfast of champions that take feedback on uh, as opposed to saying, this is somebody being critical, okay? Yep. This is somebody helping me to improve, showing me a better way. And the best one, as you know, that I like is whatever situation you're in, this is a gift. What can I learn from it? What can I learn from it? Every day is a school day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to Wealth Made Simple. 
You can follow and contact Shaz on the Facebook pages Entrust Property Tax and The Profits Wizard. You can also find Shaz on LinkedIn, YouTube and Instagram. Alternatively, email him at shaz at aa-accountants.co.uk. Build your wealth by mastering money.